Welcome back. We're going to continue the Goals of Behavior series, and we're going to talk about revenge today. Revenge is a hard one. That is one that a lot of parents have trouble with uh, because it's very easy to take it personally. And many times when kids are enacting revenge on you, they can mean it personally and in a way. It's a very personal thing for them. Uh, so it's hard not to be caught up in that. We're going to go through and talk about it just like the others where we talk about what a child is doing, how that leaves you feeling, and how that is a clue into what's going on with them. And then what that reveals about their goals or what they're trying to communicate to you. And then how do you meet that goal or deal with it appropriately. So just a few principles in this that I think are good to hang on to. Um, the first one is when kids are getting revenge, um, it's really important that you bring a sense of containment in this. Um, if your own emotions can be easily swayed and they can push your buttons easily, then you will not feel safe to them and it probably will encourage more kind of revenge or, or power sort of behaviors. Um, so if you have watched the previous videos, then you'll know uh, when I talked about containment, it's sort of like a bomb squad coming in, putting that dome over the bomb to defuse it. So if it goes off, everybody's still safe. Part of the idea of what I try to bring in sessions and even with my own family is whatever your big feelings are, uh, I'm a safe person for that. I know what to do or I'm trying to know what to do. And... Um, Whatever feelings you have, I can contain that. I can hold on to that. I'm a safe person to be with. Now, sometimes that's not true for us. Sometimes we get upset, and then it would be a good idea to just take a break, get out of there, and come back when you can. Um, none of us are perfect. You and I both are going to make mistakes along the way in this. But it's important to recognize that and important to know if you're not bringing containment, it is a piece you're going to need. Another piece that you'll need is to be prepared to make amends with your child or even an apology um, if, if you weren't a good um, container of their feelings. And it's not because you, know, you're, you need to take responsibility for things they've done, more that uh, sometimes it's the only path that they'll have to be able to make amends themselves. They need to see it in action and to see that you're willing to be vulnerable and let your guard down so that they can. Um, I'd say probably the last thing with, with this just to consider is when you're done with your interaction, it really can be helpful to focus on a child's strengths and not just the things that they did wrong. So I don't mean to say we have to see the world through rose-colored glasses or be deluded here. I'm just saying if it's possible, um, it can help them. So maybe they break things sometimes, and, but maybe it was less. Maybe they are saying really mean words to you, but maybe it was less words or less mean words. I would highlight that stuff later on at the end of the interaction. Well, I noticed that this time you did it this way. That was, that was pretty neat. How'd you do that? I find that doing that causes kids to bring that out more. Um, that'll be something we'll talk about in a separate video more in depth. But... When I think about times that kids have gotten revenge with me, there have been some pretty distinct ways that I've seen it. So one way is um, just a way to make you feel how they feel. So I knew a kid who, when he would be told no or his parents would set limits, he'd almost rush at them like a mean, mad bull. You know, like he was going to hurt them. He'd try to hit them or kick them or pinch them. And when he did that, and, and I even saw that sometimes that he would do that with them, they would all of a sudden, you know, be on guard and they're sort of defending themselves against him. So if I put myself in their shoes and I think, what does that feel like? You know, I, I feel like things are very sudden. I feel on the defense. I feel offended. I, I, I might feel hurt. Like, how, why would he do this to me? And I think that's a part of how he feels. I think for him, when they would say things like, hey, it's time to stop playing video games, and then, oh, he gets, he gets so mad. He wanted them to know, you have power to hurt me, and, and right now you're hurting me. And I don't know how to tell you that. I don't know how to make you get it, because I don't think you do. So I'm just going to hurt you, and now you're going to know how I feel. Now, I'm not saying that's right. 
I'm just saying I think that's the message he's bringing. I think that's his experience. So part of the idea is here, we, we've got to help retrain this guy to be able to verbalize that stuff, to, to say it, and then to help him not need to express it physically. So in this case, if you're going to meet that goal, one way would be just to use the ACT model. And um, I have a video on that. If you've never seen that, you can take a look at uh, the ACT model and how that works. It would be reflecting what you see in here and then setting some limits. Man, you're really mad when I said that it was time to stop playing video games. You felt really angry. And it is okay for you to be angry about it, but it isn't okay for you to, to throw the controller. You can choose to tell me you don't like it. You can choose to tell me that you're mad, but the controller is not for throwing. Those, those would be ways you might use the ACT model in that instance. And if a child is doing something destructive or they're kind of running at you, you may not have time to go through all the nuances of doing that. You may just need to set a limit. That's not for breaking. I'm not for hurting. Um, and again, you can refer back to that video for some more information there. But the idea is if they're doing something to make you feel how they're hurting, you really do want to reflect back that you're hearing or seeing that. That sort of helps them close that loop. It's almost like someone in distress shooting up a signal flare. Hey, do you get it? I'm in danger over here and I need some help. And if you don't address that, they just have to keep shooting up that same signal flare to get you to pay attention. So if you're reflecting it back, that then they know that you are paying attention to them. Um, again, it's hard not to take that personally, but it is important to. Um, many times they, they may mean it personally in terms of I want you to get the idea that this hurts me. Um, but it's, it's, if you can hold on to this, it's not quite the same as that they actually want to hurt you. They actually want you to understand that it hurts them. I know that that's bent and I, I know that needs help in, in retraining, but that's what we're trying to do is to help in, in retrain them. So another example that I've seen of this is when kids feel like they can't be liked or they can't be loved and so they'll enact revenge that way. I, I knew a girl who had a really hard time connecting with others. So she would often just try to get negative attention because she didn't think anybody really was going to give her positive attention. So she'd break things or she'd fiddle around with things till they came apart. Um, and, you know, that was a way that people would pay attention to her. They couldn't miss it. <laughs> there, there's the thing that you just broke of mine. So I remember a time when she was playing with something and it broke and she kind of looked at me like, now what are you going to do? And I could feel in, in myself, it was like I... You know, part of me felt like, ooh, you just broke that thing that I care about. And, you know, I, I feel tempted to want to put some distance between us so I can protect myself and protect my stuff. Um, and, and that's just an honest feeling that, that you could have and that I've had. I choose not to give in to that. You know, that's a, it's a real feeling. But what I do with the feeling is I can decide what to do with it. So in that moment, I'm acknowledging that that's a feeling, but I'm deciding instead to connect to where she is and what's going on and then using that to inform what I do. So I'm saying in myself, what, so what, what does she feel? What's happening here? Well, she doesn't know how to get attention. I, I feel pushed by her. and I think she feels pushed by me in some way. So she doesn't know what to do. So she's trying to kind of pull me in to get my attention by doing something that's bad. Um, and it may even be just kind of a test. Will this person still like me? Will they still stay with me? Or maybe I'll even find out, am I, is it even possible for this person to care about me at all, even if I do something bad? So then for sure, I want to make sure that I am putting forward some feelings of, I accept you. So... Sometimes I will even say to kids, um, I've already decided that you're important to me and that I like you. You can't do anything that's going to make me like you less or make you not important. 
but you also can't do anything that's going to make me like you more or make you more important. I've already decided. So that part's done. <laughs> you don't, there's nothing that you have to do, right? For her in this case, she broke that thing, looked at me, and my response was, you're checking with me to see if I'm still going to be with you. And I am. Remember, I already told you that there's nothing you can do to make me like you more. There's nothing you can do to make me like you less. I just have already decided. That thing's broken. It's not for breaking. So we'll need to take that out. And then I'm continuing with the ACT model. If you choose to keep breaking things, then you choose not to be in here. And that's up to you to decide. So in, in doing that, I'm keeping myself a person that is safe to contain her feelings. I'm not reacting to her. I'm responding, but I'm not reactive. I can't have my buttons be pushed in that same way. But if they are, if they do get pushed, then I would just need to take a break and come back or do my best to kind of put that off to the side a bit and then actually respond to what's going on. Sometimes there's a version of this that will happen with kids where they will sort of on purpose try to push you away or make you reject them. It's, it's like they want to reject um, you before you can reject them. So I knew a, a girl that would do this sometimes by saying things that were kind of provocative. Uh, or she'd talk about things that nobody would know about or nobody could like. And it was sort of a test in a way, and, and it was... Um, a way to see would people still stay with her. And again, highlighting, um, you know, I, I, I can tell for you that's an important thing. Um, but I've decided that, you know, I'm with you. So I don't know what that thing is. And it sounds like for you it's important. Being able to acknowledge their feelings or even highlighting the experience of what that's like for them. Gosh, I can tell that's a band you really care about or that's a movie you really care about. I don't know what that one is. I wonder if that's hard when you tell people about that and they don't know what it is. I wonder if you wish they did. No, no, I just want to be the only one that likes it. Oh, okay, so sometimes you wish that you were the only one that liked it and nobody else would know. So that, that kind of makes you important. You know something they don't know. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I guess that, that would make you feel different than them and kind of special in a way. So again, I'm, I'm trying to highlight sort of the strength in that. There's things in that that maybe aren't great. We'll work with it. But that's a way of looking below the surface of just revenge kind of behaviors to see what might be really going on. So one aspect would be to highlight their, um, their wanting to actually be connected, even though they're kind of pushing you away. Another might be that they are showing you how they hurt and they want you to experience that. And another might just be they, they just don't know the secret code for connecting to you. And so they're using negative attention to try and get your attention. And so you can address all those things specifically uh, and, and you'll really hone right in more on what they're really after and then this behavior should stop. So this is going to take practice. This one's tricky. It's nuanced. Um, if you're someone who is experiencing your kid getting lots of revenge on you, I wish you all the best. Um, remember to take breaks if you need them. You probably will. We'll keep going with this series and, and talk about some more things. I hope this is helpful, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Take care.